welcome or welcome back to Channel One, streaming live from our cozy SAP tech -it house. And I'm actually in my favorite room, the kitchen. Yes, and uh, as you might have heard in Jürgen's uh, keynote, he mentioned three different challenges. He mentioned the pandemic, he mentioned uh, climate change, and he also mentioned inequality. And this topic hour will actually uh, really focus on one of those points, namely uh, sustainability, so how we can cope with climate change. And I think this topic is uh, really important, not only in our private life, but also in our business life. As Jürgen mentioned, it's not only the politicians who can do something, it's also the enterprises and companies who need to really step up and uh, get involved here. So really looking forward to this uh, upcoming hour. Uh, and the upcoming hour, as mentioned, focuses around sustainability. And we will be joined with our experts from product development. Uh, first off, we will have an expert interview. Then we will show you a product demo because we like demos uh, at TechEd. So we will show that as well. Uh, and then we will have an expert Q&A. So the folks who will join us for the expert interview will actually stay with us and uh, you can post your questions on the platform. So feel free to move over to SAP TechEd website, uh, the official event uh, platform and put your questions there into the Q&A tool. And then we will have, uh, after this topic, um, our content, we'll also have a highlight video, a remote check-in, and we'll also have another check-in with the chat team. Wow. That is a whole lot of pretty dynamic content. I think I'm starting to sweat already here. Uh, no, uh, but uh, one thing I wanted to point out is as this cat keeps hanging around here. Yes, uh, probably somewhere behind me. I did bring something here uh, to keep it a little bit at bay. I brought my dog along, so uh, whenever we're in the kitchen, you will see the dog guarding me against the cat because I don't really trust cats. Uh, I'm not sure it's only coding uh, partner extensions uh, there in the back when you see it hacking on the laptop. I don't know what it's doing and I don't want to know. Um, no, anyway. Um, you, as my notes say, uh, have organized a sustainability summit in spring, right? Um, so you are actually responsible for the smart questions this hour. I mean, you always are, and I ask the stupid questions, uh, but now especially, right? I mean, you know there are no stupid questions, right? And I, I was involved in the sustainability summit, yes, but it was not, not only me. I was part of the team, yes. <laughs> And uh, that's why um, I think it's so great that SAP is really focusing on this topic. For me, that's really uh, close to my heart, this topic, and it's great to see that SAP is not only an exemplar in this area, so that SAP um, is really reducing um, CO2 emissions as well, or doing uh, things uh, with uh, our campuses, our buildings, but that we are also active on the enabler side, that we are really supporting other companies to become more sustainable and yeah as we like to say that we support our customers on their journey to zero emissions zero waste and zero inequality okay so sustainability when we speak about it now is not so much about do i throw my banana peel in the office uh, in this waste basket or this waste basket or do i ride 35 miles to work on my bike or whatever, but it's about how we enable our customers to, okay, okay, get it. Yes, um, so that's why, Karsten, uh, this content hour is actually also ca called Managing Sustainability with SAP Solutions. So it's really around the products supporting other companies to become more sustainable. Great. Uh, then let's kick that off with our expert interview. Uh, our guests are Anita Vashny, who is a Global VP Strategy SAP s hana Sustainability, who is actually live from Hong Kong online, for all I'm informed, and with uh, Gunther Rothermel, uh, Senior Vice President and Head of SAP s hana Sustainability and leading the product's development. Hi, Anita, and hi, Gunther. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. Hi. We're doing great. Okay. Great. Hi, everyone. 
Great to have you here. And it's so nice to uh, see familiar faces because, as you mentioned, uh, I have been working with, with both of them quite a lot uh, the last couple of months. All right. Then let's maybe start with uh, exactly an off-topic question here. Um, how do you usually commute to work, Anita? Well, I think that's a great question to start with, right? Um, and Julianne already mentioned we're talking about solutions in this uh, in this session. So how do I go to work? The best part of having a global team who are working on products for our customers, we have a global team. And that's why I get to work right from here, from my home. So I usually don't travel, I work from home. And then I get the added benefit of having look at those keynotes from Jürgen, from Jan, from everybody sitting right here. So no need to travel, get all the work done efficiently on time, just sitting at my home desk. Perfect. And how about you, uh, Gunther? Are you currently in the office or also in the home office? I'm currently in the office. I do a lot of sessions remotely as well, of course, these days. But uh, when I come to the office, I have a very short commute uh, and I come by electric car typically. Um, so uh, very short, very short ride. Okay, but as I learned from you, Juliane, uh, this is not what we actually wanted to talk about here, not about our own sustainability, but about how we help customers become and remain sustainable. Uh, so, Gunther, uh, when SAP executives talk about the green line, um, what do they mean by that? Uh, can you explain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a key theme which which describes our strategy actually really well because when you look at our vision on the product side it, it is clear that if we want to make a strong difference for topics like climate change uh, you know waste reduction more social equality then we got to come to a point where basically all major decisions that we take uh, on a daily basis in our companies are not only taken based on you know uh, costs uh, which we typically call the you know the the bottom line or revenue as as a top line but also sustainability related information like carbon footprints uh, you know reuse uh, degree and so on and and we call uh, you know the fact that we we want to make decisions more on, based on that that fact as well uh, we call that the green line so top line, bottom line, green line. And uh, I think that's a very important uh, you know, uh, theme for us. And we are implementing this with products. Uh, we are you know, bringing new products to the market. We, I think we'll talk about this in a second. Uh, but more importantly, we are using the outcome across the solution uh, uh, you know, portfolio of SAP to establish this green line. Thank you. And um, we often hear that sustainability in an enterprise context often comes down to data challenges. So we, I think at, at TechEd, we already also spoke a lot about data challenges. Can you elaborate on that, Gunther? Yeah, thank you. This is something which we really observe with, with many customers. Because look, if we when we talk about this topic of sustainability, it's, it's really broad. It goes across these topics of addressing climate change and, and managing carbon footprint, for example, but also other types of footprints. It, it also covers circular economy, right? The need to reduce waste and the need to make better use of resources in, in business processes, but also handling the appropriate uh, legal uh, regulations that are there. And then again, uh, there's this topic of, of social equality, which, which plays a key role for us as well. But then on across all of these areas, what we hear from customers is uh, they all give themselves ambitious goals these days, right? They all want to be exemplars. But uh, to do this, they, they need a very holistic view across all of these activities. And that's not easy because the data that you need to, you know, steer your carbon footprint or, uh, you know, look across business processes, but also, you know, have a, a consistent view about your, for example, your diversity and inclusion and other aspects that needs data from many systems. And, and this is one of the key value propositions that we address, you know, with our solution stack, which, which is built on top of the SAP business technology platform, that we enable customers to really tap deeply into this data, to, to provide it in the right shape or form, provide it on a regular basis as well, because we need to make these decisions way more regular than in the past. 
And, and uh, again, this is why we offer tools, methodologies, a uh, lot of APIs, um, and, and even you know, out-of-the-box content to, to make it as easy as possible to, to you know, use that data and provide a you know, holistic view. And, and maybe let me uh, um, bring one example here. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the World Economic Forum framework, which are out there, on, and that describes sustainability also in a pretty holistic sense and that's also why why we are supporting this framework and there for example the, the things are categorized in in four categories like uh, governance people planet prosperity and then you have a range of kpis below that and and that's a great example we are feeding all data uh, into those uh, kpis so that it gets easier for customers so in, in, in one sentence, uh, it, I think solving and addressing the data challenge uh, it, around this uh, sustainability topic is a key enabler for everyone to you know, be more successful and, and have a, a stronger uh, impact on positive impact on, on sustainability. Okay, thanks Gunther. Sounds like that makes a lot of sense and uh, as we can really have an impact here. Um, Anita. Maybe in the context uh, of data challenges, APIs and so on, uh, what role do uh, the partner ecosystem and the business networks play? I think Gunther outlined the challenge faced by many of our customers very, very nicely. And that's where we are heavily relying on our ecosystem to make sure that we are helping their customers on their sustainability journey. If I could think of just the top three reasons on how we are working with partners, the very much on the top would be how can we get these innovations faster to our customers, understanding these challenges across different regions and across different technologies, right? Depending upon what is the underlying architecture, what product fits. And here is where we heavily work with our partners, system integrators, um, even the smaller startups to really get these technologies, helping our customers across the different dimensions as Gunther highlighted. The second area that we work on is the partnerships and the World Economic Forum uh, was one example as Gunther mentioned, but if you look, if you want to really solve this challenge across the entire value chain, that's where our partnership like the World Business Council really comes into effect. So how do you look at the carbon data networks across different supply chains? These partners have a big role to play just like our customers. And finally, you know, for all of them, all the customers who are heavily into in the mature phase of the sustainability journey, they're already looking at regulations on, on plastic taxes and really going deep into these problems across the different countries. And that's where, again, we work with our partners to make sure the end-to-end -end coverage across the value chain becomes complete when our customers work with us. Thanks a lot. So uh, I think SAP already made a lot of experiences in transforming into a sustainable, sustainable enterprise. Anita, why do you think SAP is in a good position to enable um, our customer base um, in supporting them in their journey? Absolutely, Julianne. We need to walk the talk, right? And what better example than, you know, our own CFO spearheading the sustainability for SAP. So I think it's very important for our customers who want our products to help them on their journey. We are already showing good examples from on how we are green on our own operations, how do we practice social responsibility as we run our own end-to-end -end products and services? I think one of the key reasons, right, why, why is SAP in the best position? I mean, that's what we have exactly seen at TechEd in the last couple of hours. Look at the amount of the capabilities that the technology gives back to our customers. We are giving the power back to the customers so that they can ensure that they're not having sustainability as a separate siloed pillar, but they are embedding this into their end-to-end -end processes and making decisions informed in that data which is flowing through their applications. We also heard about SAP S4 HANA Cloud and what are the different capabilities. So imagine if our customers could focus on using those innovations coming from our, our own teams, but instead focusing on the business model innovations which need to happen on top of that. If we give our customers the end-to-end -end architecture on the business technology platform, giving them the flexibility to innovate they are in a position to go beyond on their sustainability ambitions. And as Gunther mentioned, the challenges are big. So we want to help customers with the best technologies available, give them the data, 
so that they can start making those decisions and help them, you know, build those sustainable enter, um, the intelligent enterprises. Okay, thank you, Anita. We are, we're running a little short on time here. Uh, so one last question, Gunther, if you can maybe uh, provide a short answer to that one. Are there any upcoming new solutions in the sustainability field that people should look out for? Um, as I said, we need to be a little quick. Yeah, if I keep it really quick, lots of new stuff coming. <laughs> so uh, we actually are launching a full range of new products in the space of circular economy, climate action and holistic steering and reporting. Uh, again, we don't have the time to get into details here. Uh, check it out. There's lots of communication and demos and everything. So uh, a lot of exciting new solutions. Perfect. And I think uh, we will actually see a product demo um, now um, by Jim Sullivan, who is Head of Product Management, SAP s hana Sustainability, with an integrated view of how the sus SAP Sustainability Suite comes together to tackle zero emissions and zero waste. So we will see a lot of products there. And uh, just as a reminder, if you have questions, feel free to jump over to our event platform, post them here in the Q&A tool so we can address them after the demo directly to Anita and Gunther so they will join or stay with us. So let's roll the demo video. Hi, I'm Jim Sullivan and I'm leading product management for SAP S4 HANA Sustainability. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today. We have a number of uh, new uh, products to introduce, including uh, SAP Product Footprint Management, SAP Responsible Design and Production, and SAP Sustainability Control Tower. And those are joining an existing suite of sustainability products, uh, SAP Environment Health and Safety Management, as well as SAP S4 HANA for product compliance that we've been working with thousands of customers over the past uh, decade. So today I'm incredibly excited to uh, share with you uh, for the first time an integrated view of how the sustainability suite uh, comes together to help solve real world business challenges. Uh, the first uh, thing I want to uh, uh, focus on is uh, the setting, which is a sustainability council meeting. It's a um, consumer product goods company called uh, Magrathia Corp. Uh, and they sell a lot of uh, goods globally. Their CEO has recently committed to the World Economic Forum uh, common metrics for reporting on environment and social and governance uh, data. And in addition, uh, they've taken on a variety of science-based targets for things like uh, greenhouse gas emissions and climate change. So with that context, the Sustainability Council meeting meets quarterly. Uh, it's chaired by the chief uh, financial officer for the company, and it includes representatives uh, that are direct reports for all the other board areas. So starting with the chief sustainability officer that reports uh, to our CFO, uh, operations, procurement, human resources, uh, and of course, uh, sales. So with that context, we will uh, dive into our sustainability council meeting. The agenda for today is a quick wrap up of a people topic that we had on the agenda for the last council meeting. And then the majority of the time is going to be spent on the environment pillar of sustainability and looking at the problem statement that there are uh, many, many new regulations coming into place, as many as 50 a week uh, from some estimates from governments around environmental sustainability. And the question becomes, how does our business react to that, all the new compliance requirements, while also maintaining margin and maintaining the products that we produce that our customers love? So with that said, I will uh, share the always appropriate legal disclaimer because these are new products in the process of uh, release. Some of the screens may change based on the, uh, the beta customer feedback when they get to market. We start with uh, our meeting and looking at the uh, World Economic Forum dashboard. So this isn't a product called SAP Sustainability uh, Control Tower. We're looking at the people. Uh, part of the agenda, and we can see things like diversity and inclusion, the references to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, as well as the mapping to the Global recording, Reporting Initiative references in here. So things like women in management roles, employees by gender and uh, grade, uh, employees per ethnicity and grade, and a lot of those topics. So we've got a definition here we can click into for the diversity and inclusion pillar that gives the World Economic Forum mapping for uh, what that topic area is. What we found in the follow-up from the last meeting is while women in management roles appears to be trending well, a 4.8% uh, up in the past year, and on track, 
We've actually got a reasonably good story for middle-level management, which has a much higher percentage of women at 44%. So our executive coaching programs, employee retention programs at that level appear to be working reasonably well. There's always room for significant improvement in this area, but we at least have a pathway towards looking at top-level management. Uh, Where we're seeing a real challenge is in the manager and the employee level, where we've seen a fall off in employees by gender in that case. So we really need to do a deeper dive into critical interventions at that level when employees are returning from family leave, uh, for example, and do a much better job at interventions such as the hiring and uh, recruiting practices. So what we'd recommend on the people topic is that we keep this on the agenda for the next few quarterly meetings as we roll out these additional interventions, and uh, we'll take a look at how this topic uh, progresses over time. So our chief financial officer then turns to our uh, tax expert. What uh, they're going to look at is an example, uh, particularly in the UK, where we've heard a lot of information about a new plastic tax coming into place in the 2022 timeframe that's going to severely affect consumer uh, packaged goods companies. This is a a tax of 200 pounds uh, per ton of material. Uh, sold into market. So our tax expert uh, is able to pull up the uh, global reporting uh, screen for this. It maps to uh, the GRI 300 materials uh, metric as well as recycled input. And what we can see is our share of renewable and uh, recyclable material used is actually trending in a good direction over time, trending upward. Uh, But as you can see from the charts, the UK in particular is lagging behind a few other regions and is not anywhere near the uh, 30% needed to mitigate the impact from uh, from the UK tax. What we can then do is dive uh, out of our uh, control tower and into uh, SAP Responsible Design and Production, which has the uh, detailed packaging uh, elements around that. So for our chocolate chip cookies, which everybody loves chocolate chip cookies, and we sell a lot of in the UK, we can take a look at our inlay, which is uh, made out of HDPE. This is basically the tray Uh, For the cookies, it's got some recycled content, but uh, again, not near the uh, 30%. We can also see things like fraction rate, opacity, uh, and various other factors around that. We can also drill into the uh, chocolate cookie film. Uh, And film is, of course, much more problematic than some of the other plastics. In this case, LDPE, and there's really not recycled content in that at the moment. Uh, We can also drill into the lower uh, part of the box and see, of course, this is made out of paper-based carton, so we're doing pretty well around renewable and uh, recyclable uh, content there. As we go back in, we can take a look at the inlay again and click on the recycled content. And this brings us to a screen uh, within Responsible Design and Production, where we're looking at not only the uh, UK weights uh, per various material types, aluminum in this case, paper in carton and plastics, but we can see the implications from a finance perspective for both the extended producer responsibilities as well as the new plastic tax. And we can see our percent of recycled content, which is, of course, not incredibly high for uh, for these materials at the moment. We can then move from a responsible design and production and decide that maybe we want to look at uh, finding a supplier uh, that is able to supply us with 100% recycled plastic. So Uh, through the SAP S4 HANA product compliance integration to sourcing such as Ariba, we can take a look at suppliers and which suppliers have the right certificates and the right approvals for these types of materials, in this case, 100% recycled plastic. And we can do the mapping to the production countries and regions, in this case, China, France, Ghana, uh, and the US, as well as make sure that we can sell to the UK market for this particular supplier. So Uh, That settled, uh, what we can do is uh, look back into responsible design and production and find out that in this particular case, indeed, by sourcing 100% recycled supply for this component, our um, prices for the UK uh, plastic tax go down uh, significantly, as well as our share of recycled content uh, goes up significantly. So it becomes an incredibly good story Uh, from two perspectives. One is from a margin perspective on the products, two from a marketing perspective around recycled content, and three, if we're sourcing some more of the supply from Ghana, for example, we are able to actually have a social benefit around knowing that there's fair wages uh, provided to some of the waste collectors that are helping to source this uh, this material. The uh, challenge that we have is that by sourcing Uh, from a much further region for this, we have a negative effect on our carbon footprint uh, for the 
for the packaging. So we still need to look into that. At this point, we'll turn to our operations officer and we'll look at SAP IBP uh, solution and integrated business planning where we take a look at the actual operations around the facility. So as we drill in, uh, what we can look at here is a geo map of facilities that are supplying the UK market. And in this case, the majority of supply is from this particular plant, 1010 in Frankfurt. So as we drill further into that plant, we can see uh, that we have some alerts within the IBP system around uh, CO2. If we put a chart in place to look at it visually, what we see is our expected carbon from operations within this particular plant was well below planning and our goals for that, but is now trending upward fairly close to our overall target line for CO2. So we have a potential problem by switching the packaging out uh, within operations. Uh, we may end up increasing the overall uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions and climate impact from the particular product we're selling into the UK market. Uh, of course, in context, there's a UN uh, climate uh, global meeting going on in the UK next month, so we need to make sure we have a very good holistic story here and we're not solving uh, one environmental problem at the expense of another environmental problem. So as we go back into our alerts, we can see that uh, we also have uh, procedure playbooks for various alerts, and these will give us the sequential activities we need to take a deeper dive into the operations around our CO2 uh, footprint. So in this case, the third alert here, or the third uh, playbook would be around creating an alternative supply plan. And if we click through to that, what we can see is within SAP product footprint management, uh, we're pulling up a list of ingredients within these chocolate cookies. And we can take a look not only at the plant they're associated with, the period it's associated with, but the footprint per unit for each of the ingredients. And as we then move forward, we can sort those in descending order and see what the highest carbon dioxide footprint per ingredient is. And in this particular case, it would be uh, the cocoa beans out of our uh, cookie. So as we uh, drill into that uh, one step further, we can see we have three suppliers that are supplying this particular uh, facility, one in Indonesia, in Ghana, and in Guatemala. And as you can see, the quantities uh, are uh, highest from Indonesia. Unfortunately, the footprint uh, is also highest from Indonesia. So what we need to look at is with our procurement officer, whether we can begin to shift the mix uh, towards lower uh, greenhouse gas intensity uh, suppliers and therefore uh, have our overall product plus packaging uh, meet these, these overall uh, targets and have a very good marketing story for uh, the UN climate conference that's going on in this market. So going back up to uh, the control tower uh, level and wrapping our sustainability council meeting, if we go back to the GRI dashboard that we started with around recycled material input, we can see where we started and we can also see from these operational interventions, uh, we've now gone to 95% recycled content for our packaging in the UK. We've even seen uh, the overall share of recycled material inputs trending a bit upward from this decision. It becomes a very good story from a profitability perspective of avoiding the major impacts of the new plastic tax. Also becomes a nice uh, story around social fair wages within the supply chain from our new supplier. As we pull out to the overall planet dashboard in the world economic framework, what we're seeing is uh, the greenhouse gas emissions trending over time, emissions by scope, so for example, we pull the direct emissions in here from operational systems, uh, for example, SAP Environment Health and Safety Management to look at the operational emissions. Uh, what we've just seen is we've been able to lower the supply chain emissions or the scope three emissions from our ingredient substitution here. And in fact, if we drill into the projections and the uh, forecast for this particular product line within the UK market, we can see that the forecast is generally trending downward. So, we have a really good story now from an economic and environmental as well as a uh, societal perspective. So wrapping back up at our council meeting, uh, we've seen DNI progress uh, where it can always uh, improve uh, pretty significantly as at least on track for the uh, drilling question of uh, women in senior management roles. And we have a number of interventions we'll uh, track quarterly now for, uh, for some of the additional levels. We can see that the uh, increasing recycled content has helped us avoid and reduce uh, the most drastic impacts of the new uh, taxation policies and fees in the UK. And we can also see from an operational and CO2 perspective, 
that changing the raw material suppliers within these operations has allowed us to have a better sales uh, marketing story as well as uh, maintaining our margin for this particular product line. So thank you uh, so much for your time today and I encourage you uh, please uh, join our SAP community site uh, for sustainability and continue to engage with us on this journey. Thank you so much, Jim. And as I'm now in the kitchen and seeing all of this uh, sustainable packaging, I sort of have the urge to eat a cookie now. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, um, not. Uh, are we entirely sure that everything we have in the backstage is sustainably packaged? Uh, uh, okay, it's still hard to go 100% of totally unwrapped foods and everything. Um, anyway, um, we're not here about this one. Anita, uh, you, ta you touched on the carbon data network, I believe it is called. Uh, and uh, there are tons of regulations out there. Does that mean also what we provide in the ways of sustainability solutions largely follows some kind of existing regulations or is that still more by individual organization? As you exactly said, there is lots of uh, existing movements happening in this space when it is about how can companies share this data in a trusted way across different networks. Now, while the GHC protocol exists on how companies can define their own data within their enterprise, what happens across scope three, that is without the, the outside the boundaries of um, the enterprise, that's largely being defined right now. What we see is a lot of partners, customers who want to start sharing this data in a trusted way are coming together with partnerships like the WBCSD, as I mentioned earlier. What is the role of SAP? And that's where exactly why Gunther offered how do we get the sustainability data to be used by our customers and with their suppliers in a trusted way? So I would say this is the start of a journey. While we are closely following on how the external movements are happening, we are also partnering closely with our customers who are matured and ahead on this journey so that SAP can already start to play a role in what these data standards look like. How do we share this data within a trusted source of networks? And what is the role of you know, the policymakers? How can we support them with innovative technologies from SAP and from our partners to support them? Um, Gunther, you might have something add to add if I would have missed. I think you summarized it really nicely. We, we support existing regulations big time. We work together with, with partners, also our globalization teams and, and other organizations to, to do this country by country. So for example, in the demo, we have seen the responsible design and production, right? I, I think you all know that the waste um, handling systems per country are really different in Germany. It's dual system and so on. So we, we need to make sure that we cater for all, uh, even regional uh, you know, regulations. But as you also rightly said, Anita, uh, a lot more needs to happen in terms of global standards and, and uh, uh, you know, also rules and, and frameworks that, that we can all adhere to. So I, I hope in the next uh, maybe 12 to 18 months more global standards are emerging. And we are actively contributing, by the way, to, to shape some of these uh, standards. Okay, so maybe a follow-up question on that, uh, Gunther, because we got a question from, from the audience around this. So what kind of CO2 information or standards are already included uh, in the different SAP products that you are offering, or is that really nothing is included from those standards um, or everyone needs to map them on their own? So... Uh there are different levels of standards that we need to look at here. So on the one side, um, um, we are using standard emission uh, factors, for example, from companies like EcoInvent and others within the product. So where, wherever needed and, and, and uh, wherever possible, we, we rely on well-acknowledged uh, uh, data and, and factors there. On the data exchange side, uh, we are working with, with a numerous, uh, with a range of, of uh, you know, entities there like uh, the World Business Council for Sustainability uh, Development, uh, Open Footprint and others. Uh, but again, there is no commonly acknowledged data exchange standard yet for carbon. Uh, so again, we are contributing, I hope, in the next 12 months, this is this is happening, and then of course we will implement that standard. So currently, we are 
uh, providing an open product, right, uh, via APIs. But uh, I think there still needs to be some action on the standards that, that I implemented. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, next one goes a little bit into similar directions again. Uh, on the one hand, Rob says, uh, thank you, great information uh, in this entire, around this entire topic here. Uh, one question is, how long has it been available? And the second question is, are the COP26 targets somehow available uh, for companies to measure themselves against? So, like, as probably values to set somewhere in the solutions. So maybe I take the first one on the products and then uh, Anita, you've been following COP26 quite a bit. So uh, maybe you want to take that part. So on the product side, uh, you know, two of the three new solutions that we have seen are already out and, and in GA. So SAP product footprint management is GA since a while. Uh, very proud to say that also the SAP responsible design and production that uh, we, we've just seen in the demo by Jim is, is uh, out in GA. And then the, uh, the overview, this holistic view into your sustainability uh, activities, which we call the SAP Sustainability Control Tower, that is in beta currently, and uh, we plan to make this generally available in December. Uh, and then, of course, we have the existing solutions that are out uh, actually since years, which we con will continue to evolve. Uh, so I would say, uh, you know, all of, all of it uh, available and, and uh, control tower coming very soon. Now, Anita, what is your view on, on, on the you know, outcome of COP26? Absolutely. And that's a very interesting question, right? So COP26 did brought, you know, the largest audience together to take um, actions on climate and, you know, move forward on each of these countries on their own climate commitments. But I think there were some of the very promising uh, news for some of our customers who have been waiting for some kind of guidance on how can they get started on their sustainability targets. And that goes without saying the, the products that Gunther mentioned are absolutely aligned to help our customers on those journey. So let me just take two examples. One of the examples is when you saw the net zero announcement from SPTI, which talks about the companies should measure not only their own emissions within scope one and two, that is within an enterprise, but also start to look at their impact outside their enterprise on their value chains on scope three. Now, SPTI gives this guidance per sector. So our customers have the sectoral guidance on how can they start to measure and report on these emissions. And that's where Gunther mentioned the product footprint management absolutely helps our customers to be prepared on this journey. The second thing, which was a big, big announcement, which came on Thursday, actually one of the biggest announcement was the formation of ISSP. That means it helps customers to, you know, really start looking at the ESG reporting in a holistic way, look at their materials impact. Now, while ISSB bring together with the big standard makers, we also had an announcement from EU that how customers would be mandated on going granular on their sustainability data. And that's where the holistic, you know, the holistic reporting and solution, which would go live in a few weeks, would really help our customers to have the right foundation to get those clarity on data, which is coming today. So it's not about just you preparing a report and having it at the year, at the year end, but how can our customers take these actions on a monthly basis, moving towards their, their sustainability targets, whether it's the social responsibility, the climate action or the waste. So I think these movements, external movements, which were kind of, you know, out loud at COP26, now our customers are ready to act. And, you know, as Gunther mentions, you know, we have the products, the right technologies for our customers to start acting and delivering on them. All right. Thank you, Anita. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Gunther. I sure do hope we can, as SAP, help with uh, all of this uh, important important question of our time here. Uh, so thanks a lot again. Uh, we're quite almost done with the sustainability topic for the hour and we'll move uh, to our highly dynamic uh, sessions of check-ins and uh, artists and whatever. But before that, um, if you want to know where to learn more about this solution that kind of also runs across about S4, about uh, uh, the, the data warehouse cloud and everything it uses, um, that is also why sometimes the sessions are not directly labeled sustainability because many technologies and solutions lead up to the sustainability solutions. Um, so 
Apart from going to keep learning on the SAP TechEd site that routes you to all kinds of different places and apart from joining the community that there is, uh, you may want to check out uh, TechEd sessions like uh, a Channel One session CH003 uh, about the uh, SAP S4HANA Cloud, uh, DT112 about S4HANA Cloud and RISE, DT 108 and 109 about transitioning to S4HANA Cloud and so on, about its flexible architecture, etc. As I said, they're often not directly use, uh, labeled uh, sustainability because all this contributes to the sustainability solutions and that's why we recommend them here. Um, yeah, right. and that's... And I mean, as mentioned also in the intelligent uh, enterprise uh, story or strategy, it's always embedded, right? So that's what you meant. It's always part of S4 or other products. It's really integrated and goes through. But if you want to learn more about um, sustainability as such, or you want to yeah, only have sustainability specific uh, sessions you want to watch, I highly recommend the SAP Sustainability Summit. The recordings are still out there. So just Google that and you'll find it. I need to sort of self-promote that topic. Sorry. Sorry of to course, take of over course. here. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that hint. Uh, I, if you hadn't said it, uh, I wouldn't even have remembered that you're self-promoting. Uh, so thanks for the hint uh, for the sessions on topic there. Um, now, SAP TechEd uh, 2021 has been now running for almost 40 hours, right? That's incredible. Um, <laughs> that's incredible. And we've been with it for four hours now and we'll do a fifth hour later on. Um, let's see some of the highlights that have happened so far. Hello and welcome to SAP TechEd Day 2. Pretty cool, right? Hello, welcome. Welcome, Matthias Kramer. So welcome, Eva. Welcome, Christian. Welcome, guys. Hi, Martin. Hi, Martin. Hi Yacht. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. <laughs> it's time for the developer keynote. We brought together nine of SAP's brightest developers living together 24 hours a day. It was a highlight for me, and I want to say also thanks to the team for, for putting it together to come up with the story and come up with the creative idea to really pull it off. So kudos to you guys. Really, really great. It all become one big happy family over time, I think. Again, I'm not trying to make it all about me. We may need a little group therapy after <laughs> having exposed all the underlying issues with, with the personalities on our team. I think Casimir's doing yoga. I think it's downward, well, downward dog or downward cat. And we have a panel of five experts. So welcome guys, great to have you here. This is a good time to go digital. It truly is a game-changing technology. This hour is all about analytics. Where are we on this journey? If we look in 2022, we even bring those algorithms to the next level. Wow, well, I'm totally inspired by that. This next hour is going to be all about emerging technologies. The the future is terminal, right? That's yeah, absolutely. I love seeing how everyone's like, you know, bringing their friends together to just be a part of this event. I think it's super duper cool. I have here a watch party as well. Oh, nice. This next hour is going to be all about customer experience. We drink our own champagne. This is just water, but you know, imagine. Yep. <laughs> we learned a lot today. I just learned today that the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> right, guys? Okay, good. I see you guys nodding, so that's good. Yeah, we're nodding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So there has been a lot going on here already. What is, what's been your highlight so far? Um, from a content point of view, I really have to say the Q&A session that happened after the developer keynote. I really enjoyed watching that and really enjoyed how many people actually posted their questions and that they got the answers right from, from our experts. So that was my highlight from, from a content point of view uh, and from a personal point of view, just the atmosphere. Man, we were just having fun the whole time. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you? Uh, I'll just stick with my, my highlight is always when our customers and partners uh, demonstrate how they use our technologies. Uh, I'll just make this my theme of TechEd here. Um, 
But let's see what's still coming up. How would I decide what has been my highlight? We still have a couple of hours to go. Right. Uh, let's hear from our community what their highlights have been so far. And we have Lena back on stage with us with another remote check-in. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, Glad guys. to be back. Who do you have with us this time? And uh, yeah, I would actually already hand over to you. Thank you. Yeah, guys, I love traveling and this is why I love this remote check-ins because so we've been to Australia before, we've been to Northern Ireland, we've been to Denmark and we're now heading to the city of tech. We're going to Bangalore, India and we're visiting our friend SAP mentor Krishna Kishore Kamaye. Welcome to the Channel One, Krishna. Hello. Hey, thank you, Lena. Hello. Hi, Krishna. It's good to see you. How are you doing today? Yeah, doing great. Thanks. Uh, it's a busy couple of days juggling between work and decade. Yeah, it's going well, going great. Brilliant. I'm sure that you watched our developer keynote yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. How did you like it and with yeah, whom I... did you watch it? <laughs> yeah, I, I watched with my uh, maybe two kids who are next to who are next to me. So yeah, it was it was really a great one. Um, and uh, so we, we got to see so many different technologies um, in, in a span of 40 minutes. I think that was really great, uh, making developers aware of uh, the new upcoming technologies and uh, what are already possible with the existing, uh, existing technologies. I think it was really great. And um, yeah, it was cool. So I knew, I, I figured that you watched it with your kids. How did they like that, that storyline a little? Because it was not only about coding and demos, it was also really fun to see the developer advocates interacting here in our SAP Tech at Home, right? Oh, yeah. My son, uh, yeah, he used to, uh, you know, uh, watch with me, uh, Big Boss sometimes, yeah. And he immediately uh, saw when DJ was hearing to the noise from, I mean, uh, the voice from above, yeah, he immediately recognized that it's a kind of big boss kind of setup. So, yeah, cool. they really liked it. Uh, maybe, yeah, they got bored after uh, maybe a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fine. They're still young. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I know that you haven't missed any of the SAP tickets in Bangalore because obviously it's just around the corner for you. Um, what are you really missing about that? on-site Bangalore Tech Ed event um, in comparison to our virtual really, really cool Channel One setup here? Oh yeah, so um, I, I work from home and I have been working from home for nearly seven years. So a uh, ticket is something, on-site physical ticket is something which I al always used to uh, look for, where I could meet uh, all my previous colleagues and contacts from various companies and um, also build lots of new contacts. So mm -hmm. the physical ticket was always uh, something which I used to uh, look for. Um, so yeah, I mean, last two years, including this, uh, yeah, we could not do that. Maybe I'm hoping that next year uh, we are going to have a physical ticket soon. Same, I'm with you on that one. Um, so Krishna, you're <laughs> one of our SAP mentors since 2018. Would you like to share a little how you became an SAP mentor in the SAP community? Oh, yeah. So, um, I mean, I started my uh, working on SAP technologies from 2003, but uh, it's only around uh, 2015 I became uh, really active on the SAP community Q&A and, &A and uh, you know, blogging and all those things. Uh, so I got uh, really, uh, you know, familiar and, uh, you know, I got a, uh, maybe I would say, uh, got some uh, people following me. Uh, yeah, it felt really nice. Uh, so someone from SAP community contacted me and asked if I would like to be, uh, you know, SAP uh, considered for SAP mentor. And if I am, maybe I can nominate myself. So I, so there was a nomination mechanism where I went and uh, you know, uh, put my uh, about things about me, mm -hmm. and it all worked out. So uh, yeah, very happy to be part of this community. We're happy to have you. <laughs> Uh, Krishna, actually, we have so much more great content coming up. It was lovely chatting with you. I hope you do enjoy the rest of our Channel One content with your kids. <laughs> and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. Have a great rest of your day. Of Bye. course. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you so much, Lena. I always love those remote check-ins. Me have too. To say. There's one more coming up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we'll see you later. I'll see you in a bit. Right. Thanks.
Okay. Now uh, we're checking what's going on in the real world. And someone's coming to us uh, who, from all I can tell, is not Tom and is not DJ. So he's probably Rich, right? That's right. Okay, Rich, what's going on in the chats? What? Well, first of all, what do you guys think of the developer keynote? Cool. Cool? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I liked it. We had a ton of chat going on around the developer keynote, um, especially during the post-show. Uh, Vitaly, me, and Marius were upstairs trying to answer and trying to keep up with, with all the questions that are coming in. We, we saw a lot of questions around um, embedded steampunk, um, uh, specifically the availability, uh, things like, how do I learn more about it? Um, can I get a list of the APIs and the, um, the available CDS views and things like that? Lots of questions around AppGyver. Um, how, do I, how do I get my hands on that? Um, what does AppGyver mean for um, the ABOP developer? What, do, what does it mean? Uh, what does low code, no code mean for the ABOP developer? Um, lots of questions around the future of ABOP. So um, that's always a big topic. Uh, it doesn't matter what venue we're in or what event we're talking about. It's, it's always a, a, a high, high question. Um, people want to know what the future of ABOP is. I'm here to tell you that ABOP will be around for quite some time, so don't worry. Um, just keep updating your skills and, um, and you'll be fine. So, um, uh, and then the, a lot of questions around, will we have a, a ABOP development move to VS Code? I'm here to say that there's no plans for that. So let's, let's just okay. leave it at that. I thought, doesn't Steampunk make that clear also that ABOP is here to stay? I, I think so, but there's, there's still a little bit of uneasiness about you know, these other tool lanes with CAP and low code, no code, and, and people want to know, you know, you know so low code, no code is like to true developers. That's actually a point of worry rather than uh, I, I oh, think nice. so. <laughs> the way the way things are being talked about it, yeah, I, okay. I think so. But um, there's also another one around cap versus wrap. Um, what's the differences? How are they similar? Um, there's a good discussion that's going on in the the community groups around that right now. So if you wanted to uh, if you wanted to check that out, that's at uh, groups.community.sap.com. Um, Around the developer keynote, uh, we all have plans. We only had four minutes to do our demos, right? But um, we all have plans to expand on that content uh, in the coming weeks um, um, via blog posts or live streams or whatever, just to you know, flesh out what we talked about in those four minutes and probably you know, try to answer some questions as well. I know DJ and I are talking about doing a live stream so that we can answer questions live and things like that. So as, as you just mentioned, DJ, sorry, how, how's the vote coming along if Terminal is future or not? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think he's, he's, he's got a gathering, so I think uh, it's looking pretty good. A so. small but dedicated group yes. of fans? Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I did mention the groups already. Um, there are uh, several other discussions out there, one of which uh, Tammy Palace uh, this week talked about uh, her company's S4, S4 HANA implementation, and she's in the, the discussion forum or the, the group discussions there talking or answering questions about that implementation, so check that out. Um, also, um, we have a behind the scenes um, thread that's going that Tom Young started with a bunch of pictures of, of what the developer advocates have been up for the past couple weeks. Um, you know, some of the exciting things that we've seen during the, you know, the, the making of, of TechEd this year. So check that out. Um, and the last thing I have here is uh, Casmir. Um, if you want to have the image files, go out to the groups and download that and you can get some merchandise. Okay, great. Thanks. I think this already brings us to the end of the hour also. Thanks, Rich, for these impressions there. Thanks, guys. Um, Thank you. Check out on those blue towels there again. Um, <laughs> Uh, now, uh, we're done with uh, this hour. Uh, sustainability is key across all SAP solutions. Uh, we have learned that much and we'll be back in a minute with... The meaning of data to value. Exactly. See you then.